Welcome to this edition of Canola TV, featuring the latest information on producing and marketing winter canola in the Southern Plains. Canola TV, a service of PCOM, Producers Cooperative Oil Mill. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Canola TV. We're pleased to have along with us today Brian Arnall from Oklahoma State University. And uh, Brian, obviously, your, your specialty is, is fertility, uh, trying to figure out the right nutritional requirements for these crops. And we're learning with canola, obviously. Uh, what, what kind of things did we learn in 2012? We had a lot of learning lessons in, in 2012. Uh, one of the biggest take-homes that we had, or that I had from the season with all the producers I worked with, was that proper fertility up front making sure the soil pH, nitrogen and phosphorus was in good standing uh, standings by the time that seed was in the ground or very soon after. Uh, soil pH has a massive impact on uh, canola stand and productivity across the board. Anything below a 5.5 five, we we're losing losing yield across all of our cultivars and when it came to phosphorus and nitrogen we needed a, a decent amount of fertility down, uh, 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen down early in the season, whether it's at planting or sometime by December to get that nitrogen down. In any location that was low soil test phosphorus, we needed that, that phosphorus at planting. We didn't see any differences between broadcast and banded, uh, but we definitely need to get it down. And so, I mean, it needs it to be able to basically get that yeah. uh, plant ready for the winter, right? Absolutely. We want that taproot to be shooting down, getting a good depth, getting good establishment to make it through that winter. And phosphorus is a key nutrient to get good root establishment. As far as uh, thinking about the kind of the to-do list then, as we think about planting that window in, from mid-September to mid-October. The to-do list is a soil test, soil test, soil test. That is my soapbox that I get on everywhere I go. Make sure you have that soil test. It is a great place to start across the board on all nutrients. Um, B is to plan um, to get that phosphorus out, get that nitrogen out when needed. Don't go in not ready for it, not having the fertilizer in store or the plan to apply. And B or C is going to be getting out nitrogen rich strips. We do have sensor based recommendations for the canola crop, but even regardless of using the sensor, that nitrogen rich strip in your field pays dividends just so you can watch it, doing that, that drive-by and seeing if it's visible. For canola, I'd like to see about 30 or 40 pounds above pre-plant rate in that strip. Obviously, we're, we're, uh, this is a rotational crop. Uh, you were recommended not to grow canola on a continuous basis. So as you go back between wheat and canola, for example, uh, what, what do you need to watch, especially on the nutritional side? The nice thing about wheat and canola is that their nutrient needs are relatively similar. Canola uses a little bit more sulfur uh, and a little bit more boron than the wheat crop, so we recommend taking a soil sample. We have not found a location yet where soil sample phosphorus or soil sample sulfur was sufficient, and we had a need. Mm. If the soil test says there's enough sulfur, we haven't seen any benefit from applying sulfur or boron in those locations where it, sh it shows it's good enough. Uh, if your soil test shows sulfur or boron is in the mid to low ranges, you definitely need to plan to get sulfur on uh, and the boron on either as a pre-plant or early uh, top dress. Okay. Brian, appreciate your time today. You, Brian Arnold joining us from Oklahoma State University. I'm Ron Hayes for Canola TV. Canola TV, a service of PCOM and produced by OklahomaFarmReport.com.